In this video, I want to show you how you can get into playing Fortnite on PC for cheap. So a lot of people have been asking me recently to do a budget Fortnite PC build, and even though I've included the game in benchmarks in a few other videos, I wanted to make a, a dedicated video about this topic. One of the main benefits to playing Fortnite on PC rather than on console is that you can get higher frame rates, but you also have a full-fledged computer, so you can do other things like edit videos or homework, so it's a nice thing to have. So this build's going to be very similar to one of the previous builds I've done, and I struggled with this for a little bit. I didn't want to put out the same video, um, and I kind of felt like that's what it was going to turn into, uh, but I thought about it, and it really is what I would suggest for a budget Fortnite PC. So we're going to go ahead and do it, and hopefully we can give a little more perspective, maybe show some more settings that will help you to better make a decision on whether or not this is going to be a good option for you if you're wanting to switch from console to PC uh, for playing Fortnite. Okay, so let's get into the parts we're going to be using. If it wasn't obvious, we're going to use a Dell Optiplex again. This is just a really good option for budget builds. No matter what game you're wanting to play, uh, usually you can find a decent uh, pre-built or office computer that will allow you to upgrade it and get some good performance out of it. And especially on a budget, being able to get all those components together on cheap, on the cheap is a really good option. So what I have is a Dell Optiplex 3020 and it comes with the Intel Core i5 4590. It also came with 8 gigs of RAM and a 128 gig SSD. I sold that in a previous build and I wanted to use an SSD still, so I decided to go ahead and purchase a PNY SSD. It's 240 gigs, I think it's the CS900, and it only cost me $26. It was on sale, so I got a good deal on that. As for the Optiplex itself, that cost me $55. So lastly, for the GPU, I'm gonna give you three seconds to guess what we're gonna use. Okay, so if you guessed the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, you're spot on. So this is an EVGA 1050 Ti, and I bought it on Facebook Marketplace used from someone for $80. They had it listed for $90, and I talked them down to $80. So all in all, this, the total cost of this build is $161. And I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, as you'll see, it can play Fortnite, and I would say better than on console. And we're building it for the price for a price that's less than a used console. So that's pretty amazing in my book. Okay, so now that we've talked about the parts, let's go ahead and get into building the PC. So if you're not familiar with building PCs, this is going to be one of the easiest PCs to build. So like I said, we have our graphics card, we have the SSD, and then we have our Dell Optiplex. So and what's really nice about this is that uh, a lot of parts just come with this. You don't have to buy like an extra a power supply, especially with the graphics card that we're using. Um, the RAM's already installed. Maybe it came with a hard drive. Usually that's already installed. Um, so uh, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that this is our boot drive, our SSD is our boot drive, because that will make it fill a lot faster. Uh, so what you're gonna do is on the back of the PC, there's these thumb screw screws. You'll just unscrew them. And then this slides right off, just like that. Okay, so you'll see a few parts. Um, so we have our RAM modules right here. We have the CPU cooler and fan and heat sink. And then what you'll see is that there's this um, PCIe slot right here. And that's where our graphics card is going to be. So once you put your GPU in this slot right here, that's going to be the most important thing that's going to allow you to have um, like a gaming PC that will be able to play Fortnite, especially on better settings and get higher frame rates than on console. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So uh, like I said before, there's with these, it's tool list. So there's a little uh, thing right here that you have to push in and then with that, it opens up so that you can put your graphics card in or any other things that you want to put in PCIe slots. But for us, it's just going to be this 1050 Ti. So you just put that in and you should normally, once you line it up correctly, you should hear a click and then it's, it's in. And then you can go ahead and put this thing back 
um, your tool list uh, lock to, to hold the GPU in place. And then for our SSD, um, what you'll see is there's some cables. Don't be too afraid by all the wires in here. Most of them have a purpose. <laughs> um, so with this, you'll see on your SSD, oops. So with this, you'll see on your SSD uh, that there is a couple of places to plug in wires. One of them is to plug into a SATA cable and the other one is for a power SATA power cable. The smaller one is for your SATA cable and that connects your drive to the motherboard. So once you connect that, um, you'll be good. And then you'll wanna make sure to plug the power in or uh, your computer won't recognize it, won't be able to turn it on. So go ahead and put that in. If you want, um, you can screw this in place. There's a few like places where you'd be able to, uh, there's a few places both on the SSD and in this case where you can screw in uh, the SSD uh, just to hold it in place. But it should be fine for now uh, without doing that. So I'm just gonna leave it. Um, I'm just going to leave it how it is. And it's upgraded. Um, the computer's upgraded. If you wanna make it look better, you can do some cable management. Um, but with it being a budget build, and an Optiplex, there's not a lot of room or places to hide cables, so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And you put the side panel back on, and you are good to go. Your Dell Optiplex has been upgraded. Um, for the SSD, especially if you bought one, you'll have to go ahead and put windows on it. So I'd suggest looking up a video of how to do that. It's not too hard. And uh, once you put windows on it, you'll be good to go. You can go ahead and download at the Epic Games Launcher and install Fortnite and you should be able to play your games. So now that we've built it, let's go ahead and get into benchmarks and see kind of what performance we can get out of this. Like I said, we have done a, a few other videos where we sh have shown similar builds and I put Fortnite in as a benchmark in those videos, uh, but I wanna explore it a little deeper and get better understanding for what kind of things, what kind of frame rate uh, you can get at, at the different settings. I didn't really plan for this, but the timing of this build is perfect. Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4 was just barely released, so we get to see how this budget Fortnite PC handles the newest update in Fortnite here in mid-2020. I will note that before we get too into the benchmarks, that I do play Fortnite with the controller. That's why you see the button mappings on the screen for Xbox. Feel free to make fun of me a little for being a noob, but not too much. So starting off with the low presets, I decided to try a game of Team Rumble out. So it started out pretty good. I was averaging 130 to 140 FPS, but by the end of the game, the performance took a bit of a hit and I was seeing still around 80 FPS, so it wasn't bad, but definitely a lot lower than we were, what we were seeing in the beginning. So by the end, uh, our average was 113 FPS with a 1% low of 29 FPS. So still on the low presets, I decided to go into a solos game and this was actually a lot more consistent than the Team Rumble game. Uh, I will note that the low preset puts you at 40% scaling resolution. So I personally think that doesn't look very good. It looks pretty bad to me. Uh, but if you don't care about that, it gets you a pretty good frame rate. So in the end, we averaged 143 FPS with a 1% low of 59 FPS. Also, I got the Epic Battle Royale. I also wanted to see how the game handled low settings, but at 1080p with 100% scaling resolution. So I tested this as well, and the game ended with an average of 129 FPS and a 1% low of 47 FPS. So it was a good experience. And I think it looks a lot better than your 40% scaling resolution. Next, I decided to test out the medium preset. So when playing the medium preset, things ran well again, but this also lowers your 3D resolution 
and sets it to 60%. I personally feel like the low settings at 100% 3D resolution looked better than the medium at 60%, but that's a personal preference. Uh, on this preset, the medium preset, we saw an average FPS of 137 FPS with a 1% low of 47 FPS. So bumping up the settings to the high preset, I was really impressed with how the game looks. It looks a lot better than on those lower settings. And on these settings, the game averaged 60 FPS with a 1% low of 41 FPS. If I was playing on a 60 Hertz monitor, I think that this is the preset that I would go to. And I would just lower a few of the settings, get myself a little above 60 FPS so that sitting there consistently right above 60 FPS and I think you're good to go. Uh, it's a perfect budget option. Next, I decided to bump up the settings to Epic settings. And while it was playable, there were definitely some slowdowns where you could feel it lag a little bit um, when, when that frame rate would drop. And to be honest, for me, it didn't look that much better than high settings. So I think I would avoid this, but in the end, we ended up with a average of 40 FPS, and a 1% low of 25. Lastly, probably the settings you've all been curious about and wanting to know are pro settings. So pro settings for people don't, that don't know are putting all your settings on low, uh, except for the view distance. So you usually set that to far or epic. Um, and this is just, I guess, the settings that a lot of uh, Fortnite pros play on, if I understand correctly. And on these settings, we saw an average of 133 FPS and a 1% low of 57. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how, what kind of performance you can get out of a Dell Optiplex and a GTX 1050 Ti. Uh, I personally feel like it's a pretty good experience um, and that's why I would recommend this. If, if you can find the parts cheap, I think it's just a great deal um, and a good experience overall. I do wanna say uh, that there's a lot of different factors that will affect your frame rate and getting the best average frame rate doesn't always equate to the best experience. Me personally, I think I'd rather get a consistent 120 FPS at 100% 3D resolution than maybe one, 144 FPS uh, and have everything look pixelated or at a lower um, 3D resolution. So it's all personal preference, so keep that in mind. Uh, that's one of the, the cool things about playing on PC is that you can tweak the settings to exactly what you want or, or how you feel the game feels the best. So if you're curious how other games run on a similarly spec'd PC, make sure to check out my budget esports PC video. Also feel free to ask any questions in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.